Let's talk about everybody's least favorite B word, budgeting. You know that you need one, but you may not know how to create one. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I'm not actually gonna make you create a budget this video. That is step two. Before we get into this, my name is Mindy Jensen and I'm the host of the Bigger Pockets Money Podcast. To get all the information you need to feel successful with your finances, I want you to like and subscribe to this channel. And if you have a question, please feel free to comment below. I just told you that creating a budget is step two. Step one is actually tracking your spending and reviewing it. If you don't know where you're spending your money now, you don't know how much you need to allocate it to the future. You could try and guess, but my experience shows that you will vastly underestimate in most categories while overestimating in a few others. The best way to approach getting your spending under control and staying within set parameters is to see first where you're currently spending your money. The best way to do this is whatever way works for you. Duh. But how do you know what works best for you? I challenge you to do it my way, or at least the way that I did it when I began. When I first got started tracking my spending, I did it as old school as you could get. A spiral bound notebook on the counter right when I came into the house. Whenever I walked into the house, I was reminded to write down all of my expenses. It was literally the first thing I saw when I walked in the door. I hear you technology person watching this and thinking, well, I could do that with a computer or an app. I want you to see what you're spending your money on. And the best way to do that is have it front and center, right in front of your face every time you walk in the door. I want you to know how much you're spending every single month. I want that notebook front and center in your house because it will remind you to write down all your numbers. This is super important because it gets you in the habit of tracking your spending and also allows you to see in real time exactly how much you're spending. That's the last column, total monthly spend. You tally it as you go. And yes, I see you raising your hand, technology person. You could totally do this on Excel or with a Google form, but I want you to handwrite it anyway. The columns are from left to right, date, store, category, description, amount, and total spend. You can do this yourself, or you can go to biggerpockets.com slash money tracker to download a free printable worksheet. These should be self-explanatory, but let's review anyway. Date is the date that you made the purchase. Store is where you spent the money. Category and description are the same but different. Category is how you are categorizing this purchase, like gasoline or restaurants. Description is for what you actually bought, like toilet paper or a t-shirt. Don't forget to include automatic payments like mortgage or rent, insurance, utilities, etc. We are tracking without judgment this first month, but spending patterns are going to start to emerge rather quickly and be extremely apparent. Make sure you keep every receipt as well. Just put it into an envelope and set it aside so you can review it at the end of the month. If you pay cash for something and you didn't get a receipt, just dot, jot down a little note. You want to make sure you're keeping track of every penny. If you've listened to the Bigger Pockets Money podcast, you've probably heard me talk about what I discovered when I first started tracking my spending. I was going to the grocery store, like every single day. And when you go to the grocery store with no specific list or plan, like I was, you might be only intending to buy one thing, but you usually walk out with four or 10. No big deal if you're only going once a week, but I was going every single day, every single day. Not only that, but when you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm just gonna run in for one thing, it may not even register as an actual purchase or a big spend. I'm just gonna spend $4, but you end up spending 20. Again, no big deal if you're doing this once a week, but every single day is rather shocking. And this occurred to me within two weeks of tracking my spending. It's like, why are we spending so much money? Grocery store, grocery store, grocery store. It was insane, but it didn't register the, to me that I was going every day because I was only going in for one thing. Your thing might not be the grocery store. It might be breakfast or coffee or a drink after work. Whatever your thing is, it will become apparent right when you start tracking your spending. Step 1A is to review your spending at the end of the month. Compare it to your paychecks, your bank statements, your credit card statements, and those receipts that you saved to make sure that you entered every purchase in. It is super easy to forget a transaction. Remembering to record everything is difficult. This is your first time, don't beat yourself up about it. This is why we're saving the receipts, just to make sure. Now let's get to the review portion of your spending. We're looking for things to cut, right? Let's make sure we're being super specific with those categories. Are there any categories that jump out at you as an obvious place to focus your attention on, like my grocery spending? Or are there several categories? Pick one, 
and make a small adjustment. For me, it was consciously not going to the grocery store every single day. It was planning a trip and making a list. And if I didn't get it when I was there, I had to wait till the next week. If I needed something I didn't have, I would either change my plans or I would just go with that. I got much better at making grocery lists, which cut down on my need to go to the grocery store in the first place. Kind of a chicken and egg thing. And remember, I was just going in for one thing, but coming out with many things. Eliminating my need to go in for one thing prevented all those other things from hitching a ride home with me. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, I would like it if you would hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you're notified of when we create more videos. Make sure to let us know what you think in the comments below so we can continue making content that's relevant for you. For Bigger Pockets Money, this is Mindy Jensen, signing off.